Okay. We all have a shared experience here, and that is our schooling. Uniforms, roll numbers, bells, walls and gates, which of course have played their role in me being able to stand here and coherently put my thoughts together, but I have many grievances with the ways of acquiring knowledge and the contents of education today. Our education system needs a rethink. It needs to be absolutely disrupted. To start off, the other system that does have uniforms and roll numbers and uh, time-based activities in enclosed spaces are prisons. I'm a self-taught artist and one part of Wolf, where we use scrap discards and found objects to um, put out stories through wall art, installations, sculptures, and ephemeral experiences. We have been working with children in and outside of schools ever since we founded our practice, hoping to make a difference in headspace, as I'd like to think. So, this is some of our work. This is a tree we created with a school in Jaipur, which was made entirely from the scrap and discards found on the school compound. The tree trunk was made of uh, redundant cycle stands, of course, no longer in use in schools, which were clad over with spare kelu tiles on which the children painted their books and copies. The tree itself is metal tables and chairs lying stacked in a storeroom because they had been replaced by plastic ones in the classrooms. The bloom that you see is uh, discarded toys from primary sections. The idea for the tree was that for the tree of learning to bloom, there must be play. We go to schools because we are really giving you a world which is beyond repair. It really is. And there is just far too much consumption, too much wastage, just too much of everything. Clearly, the headspace is polluted too. For 50 years, scientists have been shouting the same thing, that the planet will be on fire. And now it really is. For 50 years, we have made posters. We have read about it everywhere from textbooks to social media, yet nothing changed. But the world stirred when a 15-year-old Greta Thunberg questioned adults about climate catastrophes by going on a school strike. That gives me hope. <laughs> we go to schools to offer a different perspective. For example, we went across uh, to, for a, as an awareness campaign for an animal charity, and we went to 14 schools in Jaipur. Over discussions there with the children, we concluded that excursions to an animal charity should definitely take precedence over zoo visits. It's to you know, increase empathy, compassion, and definitely moving with the time. Zoo visits, I find caged animals the worst thing to be exposing children to, to have them see misery like that, in a sense. Nature is the best teacher and the greatest inspiration. When will there be more engaging excursions into forests? When will children go back to sitting barefooted under a tree? Uh, probably never, but that being the point, that when will economics become about benefiting Earth and not just about the production, consumption, and transfer of wealth? We dream of forests. We dream of forests and we conjure them up with found materials. This is mystery, M-I-S-S-T-R-E-E. -S -S -E. That forests are feminine and one tree does not a forest make. So many trees, many hair clips, objects of the feminine, coming together to make up this forest. Guiding children to dream of forests, that would definitely make better headspace. Learning to grow your own food is a must. There is absolutely no question about it. You must all go towards trying to learn to grow your own food not just for the coming times, but also, and more importantly, to connect back to nature, to understand and uh, experience the notions of patience and perseverance. Uh, composting, 
Ideas that take you closer to nature and not away from it. Think of composting as math, that it is not everybody's cup of tea, but we must all learn it. It has layers of learning for today's wasteful environment. And initially, it might take time to get the hang of it. Sometimes there may be a stench. But once you get it, it is black gold. When will those concepts be initiated and practiced in learning environments of today? I studied only till the 12th, after which I went, <laughs> I went looking for experiences rather than furthering my education. I was supposedly a bright child, but school was wasted opportunities. It was never about finding my fire or a deep-rooted understanding. It was only about the marks and going to the next class. There was never application of knowledge, and sadly, I remember nothing of it. I am now a storyteller and apply layers of narrative to each of our artworks. I remember each of my stories that I've applied over the past decade. I remember them because it lights a fire in me that school never did. So yearly exams based on rote learning versus application-based knowledge, for me, the choice is crystal clear. S-U-P-W. Some useful periods wasted. That's what we called it in my times. I hated these classes. Sewing, embroidery, crochet. I would do the work most unwillingly, usually helped by my mother to finish it. I now nurture a deep connect with needlework. I use it uh, in lots of our work. I use it in workshops that we conduct many a times to focus my scattered brain and to tune in to myself. I think it's the context that makes a difference. While at school, I associated needlework as a girly trait, something that women learned to become better housewives, something I never wanted to be associated with. I later discovered my dear rhythmic friend that I love dearly now. So that, I think, to change that in the head of the children so that they accept it with uh, different notions as opposed to compartmentalizing it as, well, also gender, stereotyping it with gender. And again, in keeping with the times, to learn it through repair and mending and using recycled or using waste products from places as opposed to, again, using new products to create things. We collaborate with craftspeople from all over the country, and I am in awe of our handcrafted traditions. I wonder why there aren't more craft collaborations in schools. Why are arts and crafts not used to explain and understand concepts? When will that start to happen? When will it move away from it being read in a book to be it being applied so that it remains somewhere For all my love for India, I am at a loss for my relation with my mother tongue. I dream in English. What is this if not a lingering trace of colonialism? And I do understand the importance of a global connect, but loss of language is the loss of identity. Indians have inherently been knowledge seekers since ancient times, with a highly advanced spiritual and cultural heritage. 7,35,000 gurukuls for 7,50,000 villages at one point in time. Then came Western education, perpetuated by Lord Macaulay in 1835, so as to destroy the very roots of indigenous culture. Western education through the medium of English, as we all learn it even today. I learned constantly through my work of the rich and scientific repertoire of knowledge that was set aside by the British to rule us better. Spirituality and yoga, gems which are coming back to us from the West. We speak of inward journeys in our work that if you have not traveled within, you have not traveled at all. These were concepts taught in Indian schooling systems. I think they need to make a comeback today. Schools are anxiety-ridden spaces with a deep sense of competition. Is that really our sense of learning centers for our children in the future? 
where knowledge is free and the world has not been broken up by narrow domestic walls. This was the dream of Tagore. Gurukuls were free. Education becomes more expensive every day. Student loan debts weigh upon families as they push their children towards fearfully expensive educations without ever giving a thought to purpose. Inward journeys to ponder on purpose, to have that thought take space in your mindset and then for you to realize it. That is what education must do. Education must help shine a light on purpose. Social work helps shine a light on purpose. Using your knowledge and your skill to be of benefit to someone else without an ulterior motive is sure to shine a light on your purpose. I think 15, 16, 17 year olds, they must be doing social work instead of doing the same old projects or new materials. I'm sorry, but that is pretty much what does happen. Um, This is a craft collaboration that we did with an award-winning craftsperson called Awaz Mohammad. Awaz Mohammad would uh, traditionally work with mirrors and lark to create bangles and jewelry. And we've collaborated with him on many a project, but this one in particular I bring here because this is Mer Boy. He's a child hero of a story that we did. I believe that the future is in your hands, that you are the only ones who can make a difference and make a change and so which is the reason why we go to schools to be able to somewhere make a difference in some people's heads and um, and yes change the world i guess the moral fabric of society is disintegrating there is lies and deceit and corruption everywhere we come from a land where Children's games propagated better moral decision making. Snakes and ladders was previously Moksha Patnam, where the ladders represented specific good morals and the snakes were specific vices before it traveled overseas and the British stripped it off its moral charts because they had no understanding of our culture. We did an artwork based on this for the recently opened Mahindra Museum of Living History the board, um, everything that you see here has been, um, is from a motor vehicle. The board itself was from the rubber matting inside cars and then nuts, bolts, screws of ascending, descending sizes. This is another piece also for the museum, also based on a children's game. This one is uh, Cat's Cradle. It's a popular string game for children. This one also speaks about the magic in the hands, the magic that you have in your hands, which you don't, well, take, give access to, or you don't believe in as much. So that for sure, to believe in the magic that lies between your hands. The importance of play, the importance of daydreaming, of the slow life, of the beauty in every day. I wish schools would teach that. Education is based on logic and reasoning. What about intuition? To have young minds harness the powers that lie within their own selves. I have struggled to overcome this, constantly having had fought my gut feeling with logic. The conditioning to apply logic to everything that we do when two stories don't connect, but I intuitively want to put two objects together, I have learned to trust that voice. Please do. Please learn to harness your intuitive powers. Learning through art from a young age helps to tune into the self. Learning to express yourself without the foundations of uh, right and wrong, simply learning to express yourself. And since each one of us is different, each expression should be different too, though you'd all agree that most schools will have the same expression. It's the mountains and the sunrise and the house and the river. <laughs> little, little play in that, sorry. <laughs> this 
artwork is called Desi Gulab. It was entirely about following my gut feeling. I had bought a sack full of buttons from our weekly Kabadi Bazaar, and um, after segregating them by color, instinctively went to sew on the black buttons. A few months and many buttons later emerged Desi Gulab. Desi Gulab speaks of uh, menstruation, how women around the world hate their periods. But if we do not honor and respect what makes us women, how can we expect it from someone else? The black plastic buttons represent the black plastic bags in which menstrual pads are sold, hidden away from plain sight. To be light-footed in this journey, I really hope the children learn that. To be conscious of their carbon footprints, to work with their hands, and and give flights to their dreams of forest. I wish education could help with that. We were fortunate to be a part of the prestigious Kochi Biennale in 2018. We used scrap and discards uh, from a radius of 500 meters of the venue. And created at site for a month. Here too, it was children from government schools who came to help us realize our vision. Together, we dreamed of a better world. We shared beauty in simple things and spoke of the importance of creativity. That skies can be pink and yellow and orange and purple, and that birds can be bigger than animals, and that there is no right or wrong. It is only a perspective. I understand that this is idealism, but then I am a dreamer. We need more dreamers. What if? What if schools encouraged us to be dreamers? Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake.